Now let's talk about some very special properties of the normal distribution in terms of the relationship between the mean, the variability, and we'll talk about calculating something called normal scores. Let's first define something called the standard normal distribution. That would be the normal normal distribution, if you will. The standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. 68% of the observations under a standard normal curve fall within one standard deviation of the mean of zero. 95% of the observations fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So if you were actually standing at the mean and you spread your arms two standard deviations in either direction from that mean of zero, you'd capture 95% of the area under that curve. And truthfully, it's actually not two standard deviations, but 1.96. But I'd rather you remember two because it's an easier number to work with. And if we actually went three standard deviations in either direction from that mean of zero, we'd actually capture the, almost the entire curve, 99.7%. Now, in a true theoretical normal distribution, the tails go on forever, but there's very, very, very little mass, very, very small proportion of observations that are in those tails beyond three standard deviations. Where did I get those numbers from? Those are three numbers I'd like you to be familiar with for the rest of the course. For any other normal curve-related computations, we'll turn to the computer, or if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, you could go to a normal table. This is an example of it's sort of the greatest hits of certain normal tables. Normal tables tend to be much more extensive than this. But every book has a normal table. Every statistical book, I should say, has a normal table in the back. And there are many different ways to present the same story. Some tables will look like that first column there, where for a given number of SDs, they'll tell you how much area you cut off under the middle of the curve by going that far in either direction. So in that first column there, you can see that going two standard deviations in either direction, the mean of the standard normal curve cuts off 95.45%, or roughly 95%, and that's what I was talking about previously. In that second column, if we go there to the same row that says two, it tells us that this curve, if we went two standard deviations above the mean and put our finger there, the area left to the right of our finger would be about 2.28 standard deviations. So think about that. What does that mean relative to what we just saw? Well, the story is sort of completed by that third column, which says if we went two standard deviations in either direction, put our fingers there, but didn't consider the area in the middle of the, that range, but outside of it, it would be 4.55% or about 5%. So two standard deviations, all told, cuts off 95% in the middle and leaves two tails, each of which is about 2.5%, and the two tails together complete the rest of the 5% under the curve. But as I told you before, there's an infinite number of normal distributions, so why am I spending all my time on this one type? What about other normal distributions with other means and standard deviations? Well, the same exact properties apply. This is what defines a normal distribution in some sense. Any normal curve with any mean and any standard deviation is such that if you went two standard deviations from the mean, you capture 95% under that curve, etc. And you might think, well, oh, that's great, John, but if there's an infinite number of normal curves, do we need an infinite number of tables to figure these things out? Well, no. In fact, you can convert any normal distribution with any mean and standard deviation can be transformed to a standard normal curve, and you can use the same tables we just looked at. So let me just show you an example of doing that. Down below, in the standard normal curve is represented by the blue curve, and then there's another normal curve with mean of negative 2 and a standard deviation of 2. And this, is, this could be any mean and any standard deviation. I just picked something that I could fit on the slide. So what we wanted to do is make over this other normal curve in, into a beautiful standard normal. How could we do that systematically? Well, to recenter it from negative 2 to 0, why don't we subtract the mean of negative 2 from each observation under the curve? And when we do that, it will slide over and be centered at 0. And then to change the shape, in other words, change the spread, which really involves changing the standard deviation, we divide each of these new observations, the old observations minus the mean of negative 2, we divide them by the standard deviation of 2. And voila, 
we've transformed this red curve into a standard normal curve. So we shift it over and squeeze it. And this process is called standardizing or computing z-scores or normal scores. A z-score can be computed for any observation from any normal curve. And there's really nothing fancy about a z-score. A z-score just measures the distance of any observation from its distribution's mean in units of standard deviation. It's basically like the statistical mile or the statistical kilometer or statistical degrees Fahrenheit. We can take anything and convert it to a known measure of distance. And then this distance measure, this z-score, can help assess where the observations fall relative to the rest of the observations in a distribution. So it'll allow us to flag certain observations as extreme or not extreme relative to the rest of the pack by knowing where it falls in terms of that distance. And to do what we did graphically before, we can compute the z-score for any observation under any normal curve by taking the value of that observation, subtracting the mean, so we get the raw distance between those two points, the observation and the mean, and then divide by the number of units in the standard deviation. And what we get is the z-score, this distance measure in standard deviations. So let's go back to the blood pressure example with man that we like so much. Here again is that histogram of blood pressure values for a random sample of 113 men. And again, it suggests, and we talked about in the last section, that it suggests that the blood pressure measurements are approximated by a normal distribution. Here's some of the data in state. I just used the list command. I said list BP in 1 slash 10, which means list the first 10 values of blood pressure in this data set. If I just said list BP, it would give all 113 and couldn't fit it on the screen. Then I use the summarize command, and that'll give the sample mean and sample standard deviation. So I type summarize BP. BP is what I call the variable blood pressure in my data set. And the summarize command, it gives the sample mean, the sample standard deviation, as well as the sample size and the minimum and maximum values. So my sample mean here is 123.6 millimeters of mercury. My sample standard deviation is 12.9 millimeters of mercury. Using this sample data, let's estimate the range of blood pressure values for most of the men in the population from which we've sampled. Well, if we believe that our sample shows evidence of coming from a normally distributed population because the sample distribution was roughly symmetric and bell-shaped, then working under that assumption, in a true normally distributed population, most of the observations, 95% of the values, would fall within two standard deviations of the mean. Well, we don't know the mean for the population, and we don't know the standard deviation, but we do have good guesses for them based on our sample. So substituting our guesses into that framework, we take our sample mean plus or minus two sample standard deviations. And by doing this, we get a range that runs from about 97.8 millimeters of mercury to 149.4. And we could truncate those to make them real values. So roughly 98 to 149 millimeters of mercury since blood pressure isn't generally measured in tenths. But this would define most men have blood pressures between 98 and 149 millimeters of mercury based on the results of our research. Most meaning roughly 95% of all men. So this gives some rubric where if somebody comes into the clinic and they have a blood pressure outside of that range, they're pretty extreme relative to most men, the middle 95%. So suppose a man comes into my clinic, gets his blood pressure measured, and wants to know how he compares to all men. And suppose his blood pressure is 130 millimeters of mercury. Well, one way to get at his question or answer his question is figure out what percentage of all men have blood pressures greater than 130 millimeters of mercury. Is it a large percentage or is it a very small percentage, meaning he's pretty extreme? So how are we going to do this? Well, let's figure out how far he is in the statistical units of distance, the standard deve. So we'll translate this to the z-score, the normal score. So take his value, 130 millimeters of mercury, and subtract off the mean for the sample of 123.6. That gives us the raw distance, R-A-W, raw distance, and then we'll divide that by the number of millimeters of mercury in a standard deviation. 
And when we do this, we see that this guy is roughly half a standard deviation above the mean of the blood pressures for all the men in the sample. So asking what percentage of men have blood pressures greater than 130 millimeters of mercury is akin to asking what percentage of observations under a standard normal curve are 0.5 SDs or more above the mean in value. We could look this up in a normal table, although I didn't give it to you in the table I just showed, but we could find a more extensive table, as I said, at the back of any stats book, or in this day and age, Whenever you can't find something anywhere else, what, do you, what could you do? Just search for the word standard normal table online, and I guarantee you, you get more than you ever bargained for. But we may as well put Stata to work for us as well. One other way, if you have access to Stata, to do something like this is to use something called the normal function. And this normal function will give us certain properties of the standard normal curve in terms of areas under the curve and number of standard deviations. Now, of course, it doesn't necessarily give us what we want, and no one table or computer package will give you everything you would want about the normal curve, but, but there's a lot of properties of the normal curve that can be exploited if I get one piece of information to find out others. So typing display, normal, and then Z, where Z is the number you want to figure out in terms of standard deviations. Doing this at the command line gives the proportion of observations less than Z standard deviations from the mean. All display does is it makes Stata actually work as a virtual calculator. Anytime you want it to compute something directly for you and show you the results on the screen, you may first type display and then your operation. So for our situation, we had a z-score of 0.5, somebody whose observation was 0.5 standard deviations above their sample mean. If we type display normal 0.5, the computer returns a value of 0.69, and this tells us what proportion of that normal curve falls below that number of 0.5, so roughly 69%. But we don't want the proportion that fall below. We want the proportion that fall above. So how could we use some logic about the normal curve to do that? So to get the other piece, like I said before, we could just take that 69% to the left of 0.5 standard deviations and subtract that from 1 to get the proportion or percentage to the right. So 1 minus 0.69 is equivalent to 100% minus 69%, which tells us roughly 31% of the observations in a normal curve fall above 0.5 standard deviations from the mean. So in terms of our patient in the clinic, approximately 31% of all men have blood pressures greater than our subject, who has a blood pressure of 130. Another question we might want to ask, though, is not just about those who have a greater blood pressure, but what percentage of men have blood pressures more extreme, i.e. farther than 0.5 standard deviations from the mean of all men in either direction. So pictorially, what we want is not just that upper portion anymore, but the same mirror image on the left-hand side. So we want the percentage of observations under a normal curve that fall outside of the middle 0.5 standard deviations range. That is the proportion that are either greater than 0.5 standard deviations above or 0.5 standard deviations below. Well, by the symmetry of the normal curve, we know that 31% of the observations are above 0.5 STs. So that would mean, corresponding on the other side, 31% would be less than negative 0.5 SDs, or would be more than 0.5 SDs below the mean. So a total of 62% of the observations are farther than 0.5 SDs from the mean in either direction. So in terms of where this guy falls relative to the rest of the population using these sample values as estimates, he's pretty much close to the middle. If 62% of the persons in the population have values more extreme than he